if we bring Chomsky back into the conversation, first of all, is it unfair to draw a line between mathematical cognition and language, linguistic cognition? I think that's a very interesting question. And I think um, it's one of the ones that I'm actually very interested in right now. Um, but I, I think the answer is, in important ways, it is important to draw that line. But then to come back and look at it again and see uh, some of the subtleties and interesting aspects of the difference. Um, so... If we think about Chomsky himself, um, he uh, was born into an academic family. His father was a professor of rabbinical studies at a small rabbinical college in Philadelphia. Um, and he was deeply enculturated in uh, you know, a culture of thought and reason and brought to the effort to understand natural language this profound engagement with these formal systems. And, um, you know, I think that there was tremendous power in that and that Chomsky had some amazing insights into the structure of natural language, but that, <laughs> and I'm gonna use the word but there, the actual intuitive knowledge of these things only goes so far and does not go as far as it does in people like Chomsky himself. And this was something that was discovered in the PhD dissertation of Lila Gleitman, who was actually trained in the same linguistics department with Chomsky. Mm -hmm. So what Lila discovered was that the intuitions that linguists had about even the meaning of a phrase, not just about its grammar, but about what they thought a phrase must mean were very different from the intuitions of an ordinary person who wasn't a formally trained thinker. And, well, it recently has become much more salient. I happen to have learned about this when I myself was a PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania, but um, I never knew how to put it together with all of my other thinking about these things. So, so. I actually currently have the hypothesis that formally trained linguists and other formally trained um, academics, uh, whether it be linguistics, philosophy, cognitive science, computer science, machine learning, mathematics, um, have a mode of engagement with experience that is intuitively deeply structured to be more organized around uh, the systematicity uh, and um, ability to be conformant with the principles of a system than, uh, than is actually true of the natural human mind without that immersion. That's fascinating. So the different fields and approaches with which you start to study the mind actually take you away from the natural operation of the mind. So it makes it very difficult for you to, <laughs> to, to be somebody who introspects. Yes. And, you know, this is where um, uh, things about human belief and so-called knowledge um, that we consider um, private, um, not our business to manipulate in others. Uh, we are not entitled to tell somebody else what to believe about certain kinds of things. 
Um, what are those beliefs? Well, they are the product of this sort of immersion and enculturation. Uh, that is what I believe. <laughs> so, And that's limiting. It's, it's something to be aware of. <laughs> Does that limit you from uh, having a good model of some uh, of cognition? It I mean, can. So when you look at mathematical or linguistics, so I mean, what what is that line then? What uh, so, so is Chomsky unable to sneak up to the full picture of cognition? Are you when you're focusing on mathematical uh, thinking? Are you also unable to do so? I think you're you're right. I think that's a great way of characterizing it. And um, I also think that um, it's related to um, the concept of beginner's mind uh, and um, a, another concept called the expert blind spot. So the, the expert blind spot is much more prosaic seeming than than this point that you were just making, but it's, mm -hmm. it's something that plagues experts when they try to communicate their understanding to non-experts. And that is that things are self-evident to them that they, they can't begin to even think about how they could explain it to somebody else because it, it like, well, it's just like so patently obvious that it must be true. And, um, you know, like, um, when Kronecker said, God made the natural numbers, all else is the work of man, he was expressing that, that intuition that um, somehow or other, you know, the basic fundamentals of discrete quantities being countable and enumerable and, you know, indefinite in number um, was was not something that had to be discovered. Um, hmm. But he was wrong. It turns out that uh, many cognitive scientists agreed with him for a time. There was a long period of time where there were, where, um, you know, the natural numbers were considered to be a part of the innate endowment of, you know, core knowledge or, you know, to use the kind of phrases that, uh, Spelke and, and Carey used to talk about what they believe are the innate primitives of the human mind. And um, they no longer believe that. They, it's actually um, been more or less accepted by almost everyone that the natural numbers are actually a cultural construction. And it's, it's so interesting to go back and sort of like study those few people who still exist who, you know, who don't have those systems. Mm -hmm. So, so this is just an example to me and where, you know, a certain mode of thinking about language itself or a certain mode of thinking about geometry and those kinds of relations. So it becomes so second nature that you don't know what it is that you need to teach. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in fact, we don't really teach it all that explicitly anyway. And, it's it's you know you, you take a math class the professor sort of teaches it to you the way they understand it some of the students in the class sort of like you know they get it they start to get the way of thinking and they can actually do the problems that get get put on the homework that the professor thinks are interesting and challenging ones but 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 m most of the students who don't kind of engages deeply don't ever get you know mm -hmm. and we we think oh that man must be brilliant he must have this special insight but i you know he must have some you know biological sort of bit that's different mm -hmm. right that makes him so that he or she could have that insight but i i am I, although i don't want to dismiss biological individual differences completely i 
I find it much more interesting to think about the possibility that, um, you know, it was that difference in the dinner table conversation at the Chomsky house mm -hmm. when he was growing up that made it so that he had that cast of mind.